The finals officially came out a month ago, and I have been addicted to this game. The gameplay is so fresh and unique, and you guys know me, I'm a sucker for really fun indie games. And if you want my review for this game, I already have the finals for noobs out from months ago. So go check that out, because since I made that video, the game has only gotten better, for the most part. But for you noobs out there who just downloaded this game, and played it a little bit but want to get a lot better, I got 50 whole tips for you. Some may be a little bit more straightforward, others kind of deep cuts. So, without further ado, let's get these tips going, shall we? You can throw the cash box into the cash out stations, and as long as it touches, it'll start your cash out. This can save you a ton of time to set up and return to the fight. Yeet! Oh, 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 no way! Did you get the achievement? I did! Yeah! You can also pass the box to a teammate set up on high ground already to also speed up the process. It's like a little game of catch. Gas mines will usually be set up near the cash out and can be super annoying to deal with. But you can get rid of all gas immediately by lighting it on fire with an incendiary grenade and then boom, all the gas will go away. Another important thing to know is that smoke beats fire. So it's like a rock, paper, rock situation. Your mines and turrets can be picked up and used immediately after, which is great for when you accidentally misplace them in the wrong spot or in the wrong direction, which happens, okay? It's not your fault. Goo, like gas, can be annoying to deal with, as in order to get rid of it, it will take a lot of shots and melees. But also like gas, incendiary grenades will ignite it, and it will disappear a lot faster. Not instantaneously, but, you know, faster than punching it. You can climb up floors through the windows in this game. It may not look like you can, but your character can mantle things that look out of your reach. It may feel clunky, but after enough practice, you'll get used to climbing like a free solo pro. When you hear this noise, a team has just been wiped. So if you hear it after killing what you think is the last person, you successfully team wipe them. And if you don't hear it, then one of the people you're fighting is probably still alive somewhere, or they revive someone else. In general, listen to the announcers, even if they are AI. They will give important information as to what is going on during the match like specifying which team is cashing out, or if only one member is left on their team, or if another team is wiped. One contestant left for the socialites. Maybe not a good time to hobnob with the other teams. The Vogues are back in Vogue. Team respawned. Hey, Embark Studios, if you're hiring people to actually, you know, be an announcer, I got a little bit of casting experience, a little bit of voice acting experience, hit me up. You can use goo as more than just a temporary wall. They can be used to traverse across areas like bridges, and with the heavy's goo gun, you can become a full-on architect with stairs and bridges. Turrets can be super annoying to deal with, but one easy way to just ignore them is by throwing a goo grenade or goo container in front of it, blocking its ability to shoot you and your team mid-fight. In the banquet mode, the more money someone has, the longer their trail becomes. If you see a huge trail, that person is loaded with cash, and if you kill them, they'll drop a ton of money for your team. Your grab range is a lot longer than you think, and it's even longer when you're crouched. This is most helpful for grabbing the cash out and, of course, trying to grab your teammates so you can respond them. In tournament mode, you will have coins to revive yourself when your team can't revive you safely, but be aware that you will only have four coins as a team to start with, and will only gain one coin between each round, so coin only when absolutely necessary. In the beginnings of a round or in the final round, it may be wise to just tactically die when you're the last one alive, as the only penalty before the final round is losing some money, so if you have no money, it's a free revive. And in the final round, that penalty doesn't even exist, and you'd rather just spawn in with your whole team as soon as possible to give your team a chance to fight again. The defibrillator now respawns teammates with half their health, so if you have the healing beam equipped as a medium, the moment you revive, heal your teammate up so they won't immediately die after being revived. And the animation for the healing beam takes a while to recharge if it overheats, so it's important to not let it get to that point. So pay attention to its healing indicator, and switch off heals right before it overheats, and switch back after a couple seconds, and you'll be the best healer since Mercy and Overwatch. Also, please make multiple loadouts. Don't just keep editing the same loadouts for each class. This way you can have separate loadouts for being a healer, or running a turret, or having a sledgehammer. It's important that you do this so you can have more options to choose from, as some classes are just better and more useful on specific maps. Use your melee! It does a ton of damage and has more range than you think, and it's faster than reloading, so please don't forget to use it mid-fight to secure kills. Both the zip lines on the map and the ones that you make can be destroyed by shooting them. This can be useful for holding down a high ground and minimizing options for the enemy team. However, make sure you destroy them after your team climbs up to the top first, you noob. You can also destroy the ladders, but I think that's like seven years of bad luck. Wait, am I getting that right? 
You can also break your jump pads as well, which will make it a lot harder for enemies to chase you down. Jump pads can be placed down at a slight angle on rooftops, bushes, or goo, and if it's at an angle, it will launch you like Sonic the Hedgehog when he's on a jump pad, which is great for getting across the map fast. When the cash out stations spawn in higher areas, you don't have to always try and climb up. You can instead bring the whole thing down. You can break the floor it's on to drop it down to the next floor. Or if it's on these boxes in the sky, you can take the whole thing down by breaking two of the corners. If you're a heavy, you can destroy so much and take down entire buildings if you attack the right parts of its foundation. The entire building will collapse if you take down enough of the bottom floor's walls. And this can be useful for bringing down a cash out station to you. You can place turrets on walls and even upside down on the ceilings, which add a bit of spice to your turret gameplay. Also, those turrets that you place on walls can also be climbed on, so you can even use them as mini steps. But there's better movement options in this game, so maybe prioritize using the turret for defense first. But if you really want to use the turret more offensively, you can place it on a canister and throw it at an enemy, and it will stay wherever the canister exploded, giving you essentially sort of a long range turret. These random canisters that have fire, goo, gas, and explosives have unique properties that you should know about. The fire one won't automatically explode and will first need to be detonated, which can be done with the melee and then thrown to ignite it a lot faster. The gas canister will activate once they're thrown, and gas will immediately come out of it. But you can grab it and throw it out of the way to remove the gas from an area so your team is safe, or just move it so the enemies have to deal with it. The goo canisters will always come out as a wall if thrown straight ahead, which is great for temporary cover and reviving teammates. That's goo. You saw that goo? Yeah. Good. And the explosive canister will detonate upon impact if you're far enough away. But in close range, it won't detonate immediately. So for close range, you can detonate it first by shooting it or catching it midair before you throw it, which is a little bit harder to do. But it will guarantee explode on impact even in close range. You can also place mines on canisters for making your mines more of an offensive tool, which is pretty good for pushing an objective. Again. Oh, he's so dead. He's so dead. Finally, let me teach you about the nuke. When you have a canister or even just like a chair, you can attach a C4 to it, making it a long range explosive that we in the biz like to call the nuke. With practice, you'll find that this combination is an almost guaranteed kill. The cash out container can't be moved by regular means, but the heavy's goo gun can move it completely and quite literally steal the whole cash out. When you're dealing with an enemy team, kill the healer first. It's Overwatch 101. Before you try killing the DPS or the tank, you gotta kill the Mercy. If you don't, they're just gonna keep pocketing them and that fight is gonna be a little bit harder. When the cash out is inside an elevator, you can call the elevator to your floor with the elevator button, but the best way to actually try and steal it is to use the entrance on top of the elevator because it takes forever and they can just press the button inside to move it. In the bank it mode, you can stand on top of the vaults to guarantee get all of the coins in instantly, instead of scrambling to find them all. This is great if you're playing with randoms and you don't really trust them to successfully cash in the coins, but it's bank it. Nobody's playing the objective, so you don't actually have to worry about random teammates taking your coins. The zip line is dangerous. You go in a straight line and enemies can destroy it, making you fall off. Oh, I almost killed that guy. No, they, 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 the zip, the zip. There's a time and place for the zip line, but most of the time, the jump pad's better. The heavy's bubble is great for stealing cash outs and reviving, even when the enemy team is still alive. But in general, it's better to steal or revive once you know the enemy team is wiped. When you get revived, remember to reload. Even though you died, the game will remember how much ammo you had in your gun before you died. So sometimes you'll come in and you'll start shooting and be like, wait a minute, why is nothing coming out of my gun? Gotta reload. The APS turret, which is like a trophy system, can stop every type of explosive and RPG and projectiles, but it also stops the defibrillator. So putting the APS turret on an enemy's dead body will force them to have to break it before they even try to revive. The hip fire in this game is way better than you think. It feels a lot less like Call of Duty and more like Apex. So while aiming down sights is obviously more accurate, you should definitely practice using the hip fire. It's very strong. If your team is about to be wiped and you have to save money in order to win, use one of your coins. It's better to have less coins going into the next round than to not be in the next round. There's these little holes that mediums and lights can go through. Unfortunately, as a heavy, you cannot go through these. You're just too big. <laughs> The APS turret also works under the floor, so it prevents RPGs from blowing up the cash out from underneath, which is insane. Invisible enemies will make specific noise when they're near you, so you should get used to this noise when you hear it. However, if they're standing perfectly still, they're completely invisible. 
If you have traps, you should be putting them on dead enemies. If it gets detonated, you will know if an enemy is nearby or even kill them. If you're winning but you could lose in overtime, do everything you can to keep the cash box away from the other teams. You do not want to have to deal with all four teams going for the same cash out station. It's so much harder that way. <laughs> keep the cash out away! Wait, that's actually a tip! And lastly, before the round starts, spin your guy. It's really fun. You can just kind of like do it nonstop. Just spin to win. Woo! And there it is. That is 50 tips for the finals. I really enjoy this game and can see myself making more and more content for this game if you'd like. So if you would like to see me make more of the finals content, light class for noobs or the medium for noobs or the heavy for noobs, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any other tips that you want to give to the people, also put them down in the comments. Some of the better tips, I'll give a heart. You know, one of those little hearts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later.